Hello everyone and welcome to Home Groups. My name is Pastor Matt Blankenship and I am one of the pastors on the Bethel Church staff. We're sure glad that you've made it into a home group tonight and we hope that you find some great community and family in the group that you are in. Tonight we're going to continue in our Sunday night series called In the Steps of Jesus. The big idea behind this study has been to learn how our Savior, Jesus Christ, walked through life and then in turn to walk as he did, to follow in his footsteps. Our passage in Mark brings us this week to one of the most significant instructions given to us by Jesus. Let's look together at the account of Jesus celebrating the Passover with his disciples and instituting the Lord's Supper. Turn in your Bibles and Bible apps with me to Mark chapter 14. In verse 12, we pick up with Jesus and the disciples getting ready to celebrate Passover. Now, this was no small holiday for the devout Jewish person. If we will recall, way back to the account of Moses leading the Israelites out of slavery about 1,400 years earlier in Exodus 12, we see the beginnings of this important holiday. To give a quick recap, God's people, the Israelites, were in bondage and slavery under Egyptian rule. Moses God's chosen deliverer is trying to convince the Pharaoh to let God's people go so they can worship him freely, but Pharaoh is not budging. God prepares one final plague to convince the Egyptians to let the Israelites go, the most terrible plague of them all. Scripture tells us that on one night, God would pass through all of Egypt and all of the firstborn in the land would be killed. The only way to have this death pass over your household was to kill a perfect lamb without blemish and put its blood over your doorpost. This sacrifice would take the place of the firstborn so they could live and death would pass them by that night. The result of this event was that all who spread the lamb's blood on their doorpost were spared and soon God's people were set free and allowed to become their own nation and worship the Lord freely. The Lord called it his Passover, and where we pick up in Mark, this annual celebration was about to take place. The disciples ask Jesus where they should go to prepare, and he gives them some instruction that will result in a miraculous meeting and provision of a large upper room that will already be furnished and prepared. Shortly after, they sit down in the room and begin the Passover meal. It is at this meal that Jesus reveals that he will be betrayed by one of his 12 disciples and then institutes a new tradition, and he calls it the Lord's Supper. Let's look at verse 22. Mark 14, 22 through 25 says this, And as they were eating, Jesus took the bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many. Assuredly, I say to you, I will no longer drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Here, Jesus gives his disciples, and in turn, all future Christians, the instructions on how to honor and remember the sacrifice he is about to make and celebrate with anticipation our eternity with Jesus in heaven. Let's look together at the symbols of the Lord's Supper and what they mean. Jesus gives them bread, breaks it, and then gives it to the disciples to eat. He tells them, this is my body. His body, which is about to be broken, beaten, bruised, cut, and ultimately killed as a sacrifice for mankind. The bread we eat, the little cracker we consume, each time we take communion is the symbol of the body of Christ, broken for each of us. He took the cup, gave thanks, gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said, this cup is a symbol of my blood of the new covenant. The blood of Jesus Christ would be shed as the payment, the atonement for all of our sins. This is a new covenant between God and man, superseding the old covenant. You may be wondering, well, what was the old covenant? Well, up to this point, the only way to pay for sins was to offer a sacrifice with the shedding of blood from an animal. Hebrews 9.22 explains this rather well. And according to the law, almost all things are purified with blood, and without shedding of blood, there is no remission. This blood was to be from an animal, pure and spotless or without blemish. The idea was that something pure had to be sacrificed to pay for the impurity that was within us. 
This covenant, though, was not sustainable long-term, nor was it the long-term plan. The best solution to sin was about to be realized through the sacrifice that Jesus Christ would make. Jesus' blood would be shed in his death. This blood, though, unlike even the purest animal, would not merely pay for one or two sins, but all sins. Look at what John the Baptist said when he saw Jesus coming toward him in John 1.29. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. When we drink the juice of the cup in the Lord's Supper, we honor and remember the sacrifice paid by Jesus so that we could have all of our sin forgiven. The picture of the Lord's Supper here is profound. Remember that they were celebrating the Passover where a lamb was sacrificed so one person could be spared. During the Passover, the sacrifice of a spotless lamb with no blemish, which saved the firstborn, was remembered. And now, during the Lord's Supper, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, will be remembered and celebrated. When we partake of communion together, we aren't just following a church tradition. We are obeying the command of Jesus Christ to remember him, honor him, and finally, to celebrate him. At the end of verse 25, he says, I will no longer drink of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And in Matthew 26, 29, he says, I will not drink it until I drink it with you in my father's kingdom. Listen, there's a day coming when Jesus Christ returns for his faithful. The dead in Christ will rise, and as Christians, we will be in eternity with our Savior. After this point, we will take communion together again, but this time, it will be next to the very one whose body was broken and blood shed for our shortcomings, our mistakes, our sins. We will be having the Lord's Supper with the Lord. This is the part of communion that is a celebration. It is somber in remembrance, but celebratory in anticipation. Today, as we prepare to enter some discussion about this topic, let's prepare our hearts to remember our Savior and celebrate his return and our reunion with him. Home group and table leaders, at this time, I'm going to turn it over to you to lead in discussion and then to lead in communion together. God bless.